Come on, come on. Okay. Good. All right, let's get started. Um, there are seven people on the dock. Oh, seven items. There's only one other person. Uh, there are. But anyway, let's let's get rolling. Um, we've I'm sure we've all read the stuff, but yes, go ahead and say what you want. I wanted to. I so, thought well, there are three things we could talk about, but your thoughts on our proposal for the zoning amendment. Uh, I had sent you questions about uses of various things, in right. and so if you had information, we could talk about that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we had some comments on some of the things that you folks have been thinking about. Okay. Um, and so we'll there we are. Uh, first off, uh, that was interesting. I, I, I enjoyed reading your draft. Um, using conversion language. We're coming at it a little bit differently. But um, let me tell you what we're thinking. That, um, we would like to wait the five-year waiting period for, uh, for conversion um, if a third of the units are single bedroom. The reason we chose single bedroom as opposed to senior was that it's a, a whole lot easier to administer both in Dave's office as well as for the community. So we, we offer that as an alternative to 55 plus um, by just making the, the units a fraction of the units a little bit smaller so that they can um, maybe still be attractive to seniors. Um, we're asking to waive the five-year waiting period on conversion. It's not a density control because if we had the money, we could build a big empty shelf, wait five years, and then put, put the units in it. And so um, the five-year waiting period is simply a, a burden on the, on the development. I didn't follow that part. Uh, okay. So. If you can build a single family home, a sufficiently large single family home, and wait five years, or more, right. right, you could then convert that into, under the current language, you could convert it to the six units. So. That's like playing games. I mean. I agree. Why would people do that? Well, of course. I mean, that, that would be financially um, not useful, not viable. But it's it's not if it if it's intended as a density control, it's a very indirect density control. It's oh nobody would have enough money to do that, and so that would I mean that's how it comes across to me. Yeah, well, uh, let me flip yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And ask you, what do you think the implications would be of? Having no five-year limit everywhere from south, to the southernmost part of Route 10, mm -hmm. to the northernmost part of Route 10, sure. that is an potentially enormous impact. Mm -hmm. um, there are other ways to limit that, including wording for large lots, including other ways to decrease the, the property so that's possible. So, um, I, I think at one point when you said state roads, that you mean all state roads in the town? Um, or one of the things I wrote, I didn't say it when I started out, we're not worded to, we're not related to any specific wording here, but this is kind of the gist of what we're proposing and so I want you to just Route 10 or State Highways in town. Obviously, you know that t Route 10 would be fine by me if the board wanted to broaden that to be, include other roads. That I, I wouldn't. But you were thinking this Route 10. I think so. Yeah. Well, we've yeah. seen your your minutes reflecting a concern that I think a lot of planners have, which is not wanting to have development on back roads. So I think that's the idea. So what is, I guess, what is the reasoning 
I mean, I'm going by, you're saying sure. you're, you're not wedded to these words, but these are the only words we have. So well, if you were to say, yeah, I mean, to, to go to Tim's point, if he said, oh man, I think you should do it on other state roads, I don't even know if there are other state roads in the yeah. So, Okay. So if you said I, we should expand it to include all state roads, I would not argue. With you. I don't think you can do that, and I'd be happy to say simply with Kat, but, but I just, yeah, I was just making sure what you meant. Mm -hmm. what you meant. Yeah. We meant not back in the back country. Yeah. Um, and, you know, large lots, certainly within a radius of town. So you're saying would allow, you, you're working on zoning language that would allow clustered accessible, what does accessible mean? Um, so this is the second part of that. I think it's, as I think about um, certainly senior housing, it's important for people to be able to get, easily to get between shared facilities. You have a home, you have a common dining room, or a living room or a library, or whatever. It's better to have a, a connection between the buildings so people don't have to get all suited up in the winter just to go to dinner or just to go hang out with friends. And I think you could say ease of physical access is what I mean, on the one hand, that sounds great, mm -hmm. but I know we went through this at one point earlier and, and various people on the board expressed concern. Mm -hmm. I have to consult the, the minutes, but my recollection was there were, there were issues of, of the connections possibly being um, enclosed and that those could then expand the square footage and uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember everything, but there were other concerns about that as well. And well in terms of allowing for a much larger scale. Mm -hmm. So, well, my question to you is, having taken a couple minutes to say sort of what we were thinking, what is your response to this? So this is exactly the time for you to say, I have worries, you, you know, right. or, or vu, you know. I, I have worries, but uh, do other, why don't other people express well, their, 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 yeah. their, I always have words. Um, mm -hmm. They're different than yours. But they always are different than mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really don't see a single bedroom as a proxy for age. And um, if what you're trying to do is age in place, I'm not sure this is going to accomplish that. Um, so I, I don't so If you could say more about that, because the last time you expressed a lot of concerns about uh, having senior housing and doing so I've done some research and it seems that places that are concerned about it, that they use small size as a proxy. Mm -hmm. I don't um, think it's a good proxy. Well, I don't either. So, you, you know, know, well, I don't know why you don't contact Twin Pines and see what they can do. Uh, we have. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I know, I know they're problem. interested in, well, then, then they should be here at the table and let's talk about it. So they don't have to do it. They, no, but they, they can manage senior housing if, if that's what you want to do. That's one of my problems. And also, in terms of globally allowing um, you know, additional smaller units, I think that the statute is brought to light what has kind of always been the case here in mind, where we can have an additional accessory dwelling unit pretty much in, in every case. You know? um, and I'm hoping that that is a way we, where we can grow by, you know, one half, one unit becomes two. And that's kind of more organic and growth in my way of thinking than the, um, you know, automatically going for six units at a time with what you guys would be having. So, you know, there's a portion of this that's just really similar. I mean, you know, certainly what we're going for is, is um, what your goal is, is to allow a new place. And I really think we need to be talking about having property to make sure that people are looking for five, which really aren't seniors. We all know that. But, you know, they're like today's parents, just getting kids out of the house. Um, but, you know, I guess if that's the demographic that you want. No, you know, you, you know what you want. It makes it right. very important. Right. And there's a lot of research that indicates that that's a right. 
Well, then, I, you know, so that's why we said a third of you, and, and I don't think we had, I think we, we had no objection to making them 55 plus. We mm -hmm. proposed that originally, and we would have to go back now. We talked to Anne at uh, you know, the Upper Valley Housing Coalition as well as Andrew um, at mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and if you wanted a specific proposal on those lines, I, mean, I, I, I agree with I agree with but but you know 55 uh, my my sister was a, uh, had a young child at 55. I mean that's 62 well, not, that's I know yeah, yes, it's, it's not a, yeah. it's, it's not in, a, in my fa in my family it, it was pretty common so a say more. So even if we made it 55 uh, plus, you would worry I, about. I would. I think of it as 62. That's a, that's a senior to me. Uh, well, we, I mean that's that's a point we can argue about if we're talking about. I, knew, really I, would, I know I wouldn't. Make no, 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 no. I'm happy. I'm happy with 62 as well. Whether or not that would want me to throw away the five-year waiting period for conversions, I, 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 I'm not you sure know, about that. You asked so about worries. I I don't want to throw away the five years throughout. That whole area, I think the, the degree of of development um, could just be enormous, and you you, you need to do a build out. Um, I think you need to do that uh, if you're going to be suggesting these things. Um, I say another thing you probably disagree with because okay. I like the fact that you're thinking more globally and that this would be something that would be accessible to other landowners, and um, but I. That's the other thing that I was going to say is, you know, having been to all of these the, the, uh, aging place meetings and listening and talking, um, and then having the experience of being on the planning board and all of that, um, if we were going to do something, and I'm speaking for myself, not the other board members, uh, what I would favor would be, and it's a big if, but I would favor an expansion of the um, uh, line common district to accommodate more if it was found necessary and if there was support for it in the town. And you've seen our consideration about density bonuses for conversions with um, with workforce housing and senior housing. And in both of those cases, I'll say at this point, even though I proposed that, that one, uh, but both of these things I'm saying, I'm not convinced uh, yet that they're, they're workable uh, or necessary, but they're certainly worth considering. So one question I know we had this uh, minutes on, uh, just don't know those minutes up. <laughs> I think it was like two minutes and then we were very excited that Ray Clark was coming in and we were going to ask him about the feasibility yeah, and, 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 and yep. Now, okay, so what did he say? I thought it was about $100. He said, well, he started at 100 and then he said 90 He, he, said, it was de he said it was definitely feasible. <coughs> yes. So that's Chris Clark's vote? Yeah. He said definitely he feasible. And he, he, he also said it. Um, something to the effect that it was actually an attractive idea. Well, I think 100 is pretty reasonable, but you've got to be another 100 to buy it in the first place, so. But he was, right. he was saying, so he was going through the whole thing, and we asked him in terms of profit, would it be feasible for a developer? And he said, and that was. And then um, there was talking about water. Is, is there actually a possibility of building in that? Is our engineer? In, in the Lime Common District, yeah. you want to tell them? Or? Well, no, there is, um, we've talked to the, um, <coughs> the Water Association, um, because there is, it's a, a private water association within the, uh, the Lime Common, and they have uh, some room for expansion, mm -hmm. uh, not a huge amount, but uh, I think one thing we also have to look at is septic, that's the other. We haven't done the septic yet, but the water, 
No, well, you've been relieved of your guilt. Um, you and I just did. Um, what's already we, we haven't done the septic, but we did do the, the water, and um, there was room for expansion. So I'm, it's just for comparison, Bedford Hill has a water pull up, um, and um, we've also been asked if we can expand. And we think we can add eight bedrooms. So that's, but we've got to be able to add 60 bedrooms. So I'm going to be interested to hear what they think that they could accept what scale they would have. Yeah, yeah, Colin Robinson told me that he thinks they're using about one third Yeah, I mean there are limits. Even though it's one third, you know, we you couldn't use the six or seven percent. But the but the gist gist of it was that there there, there was room for expansion. Mm -hmm. I guess the other thing I have, I mean, I, we've had this conversation. We know each other so well at this point. I, and, but I, I mean, I have to address this, um, and, and and this is a concern for me. Um, your you're talking about something being beneficial for the town mm -hmm. uh, in, your, in your cover letter. But it, it's unavoidable for me to see that this works out really well. I mean, you, you're both directly in, and beneficial big landowners mm -hmm. uh, along Route 10. Right. Um, you, you have your property next door, and then I think you have some land to the north. Or oh, just they're, they're actually. The, my property runs from the driveway of Lock on Lock up to all to Newton Strike. So how many acres is that? About 16. 16 acres. So you have 16 acres to the north of Lock on Lodge. You have Lock on Lodge, you have the remain the, rem the remainder lot, mm -hmm. and you have a piece of property across the street which, as well. So I mean there's a, there's enormous benefit mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. personally, directly and as beneficial owners. That I, I, you know, it's just clear, mm -hmm. and I also know from all of our discussions together that these things are specifically things that you're looking for for your development. And when I when I go about looking to do something about anything in line, whether it's senior housing or anything else, mm -hmm. I'm not coming at it through the, the filter of well, how is this going to work out for me. I'm trying my best mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. look at how is this specifically to the benefit of, of mine. And if I have doubt, and again, I'm speaking for myself, if I have doubts about it, I'll do a, a do no harm thing. I don't feel like I want to gamble with something I'm not sure about. This has the appearance of, this, of essentially you know, the tail wagging the dog, that, that you have these, these goals which Public, um, and this fits your goal. Well, we see you trying to address some of these similar goals, and so based on this, and um, just even the, the ZBA when they said, if you think waiving a conversion is a good idea, that's something that should go through the planning board and not be a variance, which I agree with. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons. So but that's, not, that, that, excuse me, that's, that's not addressing what I just asked. Well, I'm not a member of this planning commission. I'm not, I'm not so asking I'm not you as a member of planning to say, here's a good idea. Uh, I, I, I have, I, I'm not going to be completely objective. Uh, neither will you be. Uh, but you will be perhaps more objective. But what we're saying is, yes, we have a vested interest. But so what? You still have a good idea for the thing. Well, I, I, I have to tell you, I don't think it is a good idea. Okay, so tell us what's wrong with it. I told, I told you what my preference, you, I told you what my preference would be if I were to, to be convinced that doing something along these lines was a good idea. Uh -huh. I would keep it closer to the center of town mm -hmm. and uh, I certainly wouldn't expect, I know you feel that, but I, I feel like the town cannot handle that wide um, mm -hmm. open up, which would be a huge tax consequence. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm fine with, I'm fine with the, with the age. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mean if what we're all 
all 62, then you wouldn't have any problem with this test. No, I would have less problem. Definitely have less problem. Well, we're not talking about density so much. We're talking about it in the bonus. You know, how do you feel about the conclusion getting rid of that or providing a mechanism to um, circumvent the five-year waiting period? That's I, the question. The, the only, over that wide a swath, uh, I, I couldn't support that. I, I could consider it um, in, a, in a limited area. Mm -hmm. So what we're basically talking about is new construction of a structure that would have a third, a third of its needs would be one bedroom and, and then designate it for people who are 62 years old. I mean, is that? No, I mean, that's not how I would. Well, I'm just trying to like rephrase this into. But, uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't phrase it though. Okay. I, I would phrase it the way I phrased it in the density bonus. Seems to me if you're trying to uh, address uh, senior housing or aging in place, then the place for it is in its own section in the ordinance. We talked about administratively. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's much easier for someone to come in and say, okay, I'm going to do senior housing. Here's the section of the ordinance that addresses senior housing, and we can work from that. This, um, to me, is just like a back door that um, it really, it doesn't address that, and um, to me it clutters up the, the conversion and kind of guts the, the conversion and the whole idea of the conversion. Um, if you have brand new construction that you're going to put in multiple houses, multiple units, it's not a conversion. It, it, it's new construction, and so I think that that needs to be addressed up front in its own well, that's a lot section. Of things, like take it out of the conversion. Yeah, I, I don't believe it's a conversion. I really well, don't. That's not it's, it's, Rather than call it conversion out, what I've been looking at, I don't know, can with his experience, it seems to me that the senior housing models that I've seen are sort of uh, from the 90s or 2000s, and that now the senior housing is it's much more multi-age, it's not necessarily in the senior housing section, but maybe it's in, I'm just thinking out loud here, it's in a uh, new housing to benefit senior uh, well, you're not talking about CCOCs, um, say in CC continuum care retirement communities. No. You're talking about mixed age. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe mm -hmm. that's what you're saying. New mixed age, mm -hmm. new construction. Mm -hmm. yeah. That maybe would be a, pretty much any that. new construction. Right. <laughs> you know, well, there, there's nothing that would limit. Would it be a new section? Um, well, I, just, I don't believe that it uh, should be put it's in the conversion right. section as it is not a conversion. It is new construction. You're not converting an old building. You're you're taking and saying, I'm building a brand new structure. Um, and like I say, any if you were to put up any apartment building in any city, it's going to be mixed. Unless you specifically say it's not. And maybe another way to say this is a new structure for six units would be loud. Yeah. Well, one third, blah, blah, blah. I think that, that would be, that that would be a more uh, that's uh, direct that's way that's of doing business. That's what I was trying to get out of part. Well, like, you know, that, that's an interesting way to get to it. I mean, I had not, part of the reason we wrote it this way was to say all the other rules that apply, apply. We just well, don't have why not just say, well, you want, okay. you want apartment in okay. building, an apartment building apply. That you could come up with a, a, a different name for it. Yeah. I mean, I think in some sense, this is semantics, but we all know what we're right. talking about. And the big question is whether we're comfortable with it. We have a five year period. Well, well, I, I, I told you what mine was. Well, if the waiver isn't the way to do it, I mean, it's easy enough to come back and say. The waiver changes the ordinance. Right, but it's got to be some form of changing the ordinance. And we want to do that. Understand that the outcome five years from now it would look exactly the way it would anyway. We were asking, we're not asking to increase the densities that allow town allowance, whether or not we 
agreed with what the town has done. So this is what the town has yes. got for it by this. Well, well, this would increase the density. No, because it would build the primary accessory now and let the rest of it sit there. But or, you're, you're, you're saying that you would be allowing greater than six units. And so that would be increasing. No, no, no so it's still it's still increasing. No. Is it so? Okay. Well, it depends on how you interpret that connected. Well, right. That's, 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 right. that's the other that's thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think looking at the big, bigger the big picture, it's, 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 um, okay. everybody's always concerned about their property taxes. That's mm -hmm. a given, right? Right. But in the last year or so, it seems like people online are even more concerned to the extent that there's been a committee formed to try to figure out how to not have property taxes keep going up and up. Mm -hmm. So it seems like to change the zoning to allow a lot of development. Last year, the, the school budget went up 7%, mm -hmm. and I think they're predicting again this year possibly another 7%. Mm -hmm. if, if it goes up 7% a year for seven years in a row, that doubles the school budget. I mean, the town can't do that. I mean, if the school budget doubled, there would be, I don't know how many people in town would be leaving, probably me. Well, in that case, I'll support it. So, I'll yeah. support it. <laughs> right. so I, mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is that if we're doing something to increase the popula you know, school population a lot, it's going to be, I think it's going to be really against what people in town are thinking. Well, you know, trying to keep the tax down. I know we talked to Jeff Valens, and he was saying that the school could absorb 15% increase in population without adding on more physical. But, but with a if, possible impact on that, the quality. Right. But that's only if the 15% is divided equally among the classes, which is not even going to happen. <coughs> I mean, we, somewhere along the line, or somewhere only less than 15% increase is going to make us build more um, physical private of school. And there's no more room there to build, really, on that, unless they go up. I'm not sure. But on, on that lot, the school has, there's no more room. So I think people are really getting concerned about the size of the school, which would have a huge tax impact. It's one reason why, the, I, I might have had just given my opinion, that you, you'd probably stand a better chance um, if your proposal about, you know, concern about seniors was exclusively seniors, because mm -hmm. they feel like, they, unless the seniors are going to elementary school, So the town's concern is not is your guys' concern is the number of kids in school. Part of it's not it's not a, yeah, it's a it's a concern. Uh, it's part of our it's in our it's in the ordinance right. that we have to be concerned right. about the impacts on uh, in the purposes section if you read it. Mm -hmm. But you can't think and say okay nobody else can. No, it's not nothing. remote. Did anybody here say that? No. How many houses? Well, this year, not as many, but last year we had uh, the most I've ever issued permits for. Please don't say okay. something right. like that. That's no, not no, remotely. Like, but, uh, but what's happened, and I don't know about these figures, but we all know that the average cost of a new home in the last, which what were those figures, three years, is $850,000. Um, that, that I don't know, but what I can tell you is that what I can tell you is that we have put in a tremendous amount of work this past year into looking into housing and that the distribution. Well, we have it right there. It's still up from two years ago. Oh, there you are. The distribution is pretty healthy. These are preliminary numbers. Not very much. I think. I think you got pretty good deal. Answers. I think so. The first one. Yeah. I think so. Yes. So, so un unless I'm willing to say, we said our say. You said so yeah, your serious concern. Uh, yeah. I mean, the thing you is, you may see us again. Yeah, if you, sure. The thing is, if you guys, if if the only thing was being built was what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. that would be one thing. But to change the zoning, potentially, mm -hmm. there could be right. a huge amount of development. 
And so I think that's the real problem. One of the things that you asked me were about build out. I think it would be a good idea to do a build out mm -hmm. for what your proposal would would uh, cause and, and also a build out for all of your property, the maximum build out mm -hmm. on, on your yeah. direct and beneficially owned property so that people can see how you would benefit mm -hmm. from your proposal for the town. Yep. Okay. I mean, I think we can include that. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Good. Um, so, trying to move this along. All right. Uh, I asked you, I sent John a, a list of questions. Right. I, I, I don't have specific answers, but I can give you my impression that, mm -hmm. that in, the, in the recent memory, there have been some ADUs, but I can also tell you that you know there haven't been haven't been like five or ten a year. There've been occasional ones. Um, I also know from the work we've done that there are a tremendous amount of multi-housing and uh, ADU uh, properties uh, that exist in town. Mm -hmm. um, your other question no, was. I think you said most of them were on back road. Well, no. Uh, that was yeah. uh, so. Uh, so there's some creation of accessory building. Yeah, I for in my opinion, I see about one a year. Okay. Is what I generally see. Okay. And then in in the context again of the surveys we've done, there are a lot of multi-housing properties. Mm -hmm. It's a significant. And to your other question was conversion of homes to multiple units after five years. I can't recall any. Uh, I do not don't recall any. No, I don't recall okay. any. Lot size, the lot size averaging um, uh, cases we've had that I recall uh, were mostly increasing, um, uh, adding an extra house to a property. Mm -hmm. um, you can portal, say order magnitude? Oh, I can remember, uh, probably three. It's all been in, in recent, yeah. Yeah, in recent. I mean, I know I've talked to a couple of folks who have that. been looking at it in research. For some reason or other, have not. But I think there, you know, in the, in the way past when the zoning was adopted, there were probably seven or eight, you know, in the first couple of years mm -hmm. that were requesting use. I just want to wrap this up because I don't want to keep them waiting any longer. So. The, oh, we the, the, the affordable housing act, there's, I don't think anything's ever been done. I know that, um, oh, and getting back to the conversion, I know at the Aging in Place meeting, Nancy Grandin uh, expressed interest. She said she was considering changing, converting her house. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Whitman said... They, they talked about the pocket hand. No, he, he said he was uh, going to look into conversion. Oh, okay. well, I, I don't well, know. I, that was a surprise to me. Uh, the affordable housing. Uh, anyway, the affordable housing article. Um, I, the only thing I know that ever happened with that was again Nancy Grandin and Bill Weiss uh, were involved where they tried that they donated the land and it, it didn't work out. But um, I am uh, that uh, article 11 works. Um, I have looked into that, and my belief is it's feasible, hmm. but somebody has to be motivated to do it. Um, so those well, and, and I've also seen the, I mean, the, the work that you did for the senior or the workforce. And I sort correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that's something that you would envision you would replace before it. No, I wouldn't no. replace it. Oh, okay. Right. We, I, would, I wouldn't get rid of that affordable. Okay. No, I'll have to read it. I'll read it yourself again. I'm sorry. Third time. I'm sorry for you if you've got to okay. read it again. Anyway, uh, I hope that was helpful. That yeah, was. Uh, is there time for us to talk about a couple of the other things you can do about? Or do you want to wait for those? Um, I would say that if you can help these people Okay. That's fine. Okay, so go ahead. Extra half hour is fine. That's with us. fine with you. Okay. okay. So sure. Go ahead. Okay. Great. Thank you. So that reduces your time to five minutes. <laughs> uh, we only need five. So you hope. You hope. So we're. Um, you are. 
proposing a change to the, the definition of the dwelling unit. And one of the things that we've been thinking about is having um, several private units with a shared kitchen. So there'd be a bedroom, living room, bathroom, maybe a kitchenette in each of several uh, places, but the, there'd be a, a shared kitchen. So, so there wouldn't be a kitchen, but they'd be individually owned, right. separate and from. Called apartments, um, well, not apartments, apartments. Apartments. POVs, um, or see if there's there's bunches of terms for them. So that so these would not have any any. They have their own kitchen. That kitchen house. No, lots of them don't. You just said that they. Okay. All know, right. So so th that's <laughs> why I'm asking. What uh, this proposed if, if they have kitchen kitchenettes, that's the dwelling unit. Okay. So if there were no cooking facilities within the three rooms, bedroom, living room, bath, um, if there were no cooking facilities in there. Sounds like a three-bedroom house. Right. So I have three bedrooms, three bath, right? Six-bedroom house. Yeah. So the purpose behind changing the definition, we weren't really looking to change the definition right. of the dwelling unit. We have one definition in the zoning ordinance mm -hmm. and a different definition in the subdivision ordinance. So what we're trying to do is make them match. We argued over wording for I don't know how long. And then the state came out with a thing and it defined the dwelling unit. Yeah, we said, this let's is use state their language. language. So we just took the state language. Okay. It's not that we want to change what a dwelling unit is, but it looks pretty stupid if you got one definition in the zoning and a different definition in the subdivision. Right. And we want to just fix that. Okay. So, so we just use so the state yes. language. Yeah. So I think there's no. Rich, ultimately, though, it's up to our zoning administrator to make decisions about what's a dwelling unit and what's not. Mm -hmm. So, but I think doesn't matter. <laughs> But well, I mean, say what it sounds like, uh, but <coughs> it's, I mean, if each of those had a separate entrance or, I mean, face it, I know you guys are trying to get lots of units in mm -hmm. whatever way you can, right. and so what we're, you know, and I don't know if those would be separately owned or, well, the right. state of Vermont has been encouraging this sort of development, so they're coming to talk to us about it.
so it, it's helpful. So, um, I, I happen to have been looking back through the Minutes of the Zoning Board and back in 1992. <laughs> Really? That was a bit, those are the best minutes. They, actually, they, they were pretty good. Right. <laughs> um, Gerald Novell and Wayne Pike came in and they, um, they actually were asking to increase the number of units from four to six. Right. Um, and the, um, the, they also suggested increasing the minimum floor area, area from 750 to 1,000. And the board actually said no. Um, they, they didn't think that the, the increase in square footage was necessary because they wanted people to have the ability to create smaller units for single people, couples, single parents, and the elderly with, uh, without the cost of uh, a larger unit. So is that... That was is, the purpose of the That was the purpose for going to four to six and not increasing this phase. Is that well, different that, from that was that was a 1992. Look, I've been on the planning board for a while, and as the planning, as people turn over, so do opinions. Mm -hmm. That was a 1992 opinion. Mm -hmm. um, we went over to the best of our ability uh, what what we thought would be the good ideas, and that was, that was this planning board's interpretation. A different planning board. One day the town will be blessed, and all of us will be off the planning board, and then you'll have really, really good uh, um, objectives and definitions. But that's what we came up with. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Take care as always. Thank you. Stay safe. Right. Thank you for your patience and um Well this is